Black Adam, Shazam, two muscular men in tight clothing that can shoot electricity out of their bodies, but only one knows how to floss. You're our only hope. Bye, have a great time. There are a lot of similarities between these two movies, aside from the thunderbolts on the costumes. But when we take a deeper look at these heroes and their stories, we realize that they couldn't be any more polar opposites. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. You grovel like a child. I, I'm a kid. You don't want to hurt a kid, do you? <laughs> Shazam embraces his inner child-like cheesiness, reminiscent of Marvel's MCU, while Black Adam harkens back to the darker days of Batman v Superman. Simply put, these two are estranged siblings at best. Say hi to Billy. Don't take it personally. He's like that with everyone. This is made even more evident as The Rock is reported to want nothing to do with his comic book arch nemesis, as he insists on fighting the Man of Steel himself. Being so similar yet so different, we can clearly see how one movie could come out on top in terms of sheer numbers, but it's when we start picking them apart that we can find which one is truly worthy of a sequel. Just by looking at the beginning minutes of each film, can we find the most obvious differences in quality? Black Adam kicks things off by giving us a brief glimpse at an early Kondok and a not-so-brief narration of events. Kondok was a center of power and enlightenment. To make the crown, he needed Eternium, a rare mineral of magic properties. Council of Wizards, the magical guardians of the Earth, sought to restore the balance. They empowered him with the gift do it. of the ancient this shit no more, man. Who are the wizards, and why did they choose this child as their champion? Listen to this three-page essay of exposition. Who is the villain, and what is he after? Oh joy, the disembodied voice is here to explain it to you. But this is where Shazam's movie comes in and metaphorically steals Black Adam's lunch. No, 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 no. That's my lunch, kid! because Shazam's introduction explains who the wizards are and why they chose Billy Batson. But you hear it from the wizard's own mouth. My name is Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> You get to not only see the villain before they become a villain, but watch them grow into said villain. You get to see Black Adam's villain grow too, but he grows into Scorpion King levels of bad CGI. <laughs> The point being that Shazam, as a movie, doesn't rely on lazy exposition to build its foundation. But this dispassionate style permeates throughout Black Adam, as you couldn't care less about Black Adam's character, even when he's letting his villains know what The Rock is cooking. Meanwhile, despite Levi's lines becoming cringier and cringier with each passing minute, I'm floating! <laughs> We are at least invested in his determination to protect his foster family and his eventual growth into a fully fledged hero. It's not that hard to see which one went in with the superhero heart audiences gravitate towards. What do I want? Lightning with my hands. Lightning with my hands. That. And which one won't stand the test of time due to its lack of creative soul? I tell them that the man of black. But hey, it's all fun and games until James Gunn, Thanos snaps everything away. So let's just enjoy what we have while we still have it. This is that guy, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Bye, have a great time.